Hello, everybody. My name is Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics 365 MVP, and I'll be facilitating this conversation with Trevor Nimigears and Vinay Nair. Today, we're going to be talking about how the Microsoft platform is changing the environmental health and safety software industry. And I'm here today with a couple of special guests, Trevor Nimigears and Vinay Nair. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves and tell us what you do, and we'll start with Vinay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vinay Nair. I am a uh, fractional CMO for the uh, industry, the, the tech SaaS industry, uh, primarily in the Dynamics ecosystem, but also outside. Um, so I've been, you know, fractionally CMOing for a little while now, but before that, I was a CMO for a number of, um, of growing uh, software companies here in the Canadian side of the border, um, uh, most notably with Intellex, where I was in the EHS space. Uh, but before that, I used to work with uh, all of you in the Dynamics ecosystem, where I led uh, marketing for the uh, Dynamics uh, practice in Canada. And that's where you and I and Trevor all met uh, a long time ago. Okay, thank you, Vinay. Trevor, over to you. Who are you? And tell the folks what you do. My name is Trevor Demigiers. Um I am the managing director of iTrack 365. And uh, we are a very focused ISV in the, uh, you know, the Microsoft Dynamics ecosystem, um, focused on this space around EHS or environment health and safety. So we'd be classified as, as what most would say is a industry ISV. ISV, and we are, are focused on really going to market, co-selling with Microsoft with our special expertise in this particular domain. So Trevor, maybe you can tell us about who uses this type of software and sort of the, the application. Yeah, uh, uh, certainly Ken Rick. Um, so when you look at the, the, the EHS space, um, there's been some fairly fundamental things that are happening across um, what might, some might see as, as being kind of core safety and, and operational processes. Um, companies have really tried to take their technology and embed a lot of, uh, you know, their core processes around compliance, their core processes around keeping people safe, and really, you know, you know, digitally transforming with a lot of the, you know, fundamental building blocks of cloud technology. And that's really what EHS has been doing is EHS has been bringing some of that technology forward, using the best of mobile, the best of cloud, but really adding this layer of kind of industry expertise in to help companies remain more compliant to, you know, the governments and regulators that they play with um, and manage to, um, and, you know, the various, uh, you know, industry groups that they'll, they'll work with. That's, that's primarily where we play. So Trevor, um, in your category, you probably still are displacing a lot of paper base and probably older legacy systems. Yeah, there is, uh, Rick. There's a lot of, um, you know, companies that are still, you know, fighting with the fundamental change that needs to come with, with digitizing, uh, moving from paper to electronic. There's a lot of legacy systems. There's a lot of disconnected systems. And really what we try and do is bring those all together within the Microsoft framework. Uh, the suite of tools that companies have with Microsoft is very powerful. We add an industry layer on top of that that really extends those processes, gives them the, the capability that they need, um, you know, so that they work with that every day as part of their, uh, their ongoing work. Okay, great. Vinay, is there anything that you want to add about this uh, enterprise health and safety environmental software category? Yeah, I mean, I was I was very much uh, in the core ERP space, as you know, in the in, in the financials and supply chain management and CRM side. But what really attracted me to the space was that it was a really big problem that a lot of uh, every enterprise has to face, which is uh, employee safety, right? And and there's millions and millions of people every day that actually die at work, right? And um, and so I was very attracted to this industry when I was first um, you know, introduced to it because it, it was solving a really human problem. Um, but, they, but people were solving it in the most uh, you know, rudimentary ways uh, to what you were talking about before, like checklists and, 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 and paper checklists. And, and a lot of them were using you know, Excel and stitching together a lot of you know, uh, homemade systems to solve what is a, a fundamentally a really, really, uh, you know, uh, human and, and impactful problem for them. So that's, this space has been, it was very interesting to me, uh, especially coming from the mainstream ERP market and then seeing how people were solving uh, this problem 
in the bright, the varied ways that they did. And so it was, it, it, it intrigued me and it actually attracted me to this particular industry. So, you know, we're looking at what uh, iTrack is, has actually built on this Microsoft platform. And Vinay, you know, you're uh, formerly from Microsoft. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, what iTrack is doing and the importance of the Microsoft cloud to uh, health and safety software. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, the the cloud, the notion of the cloud is is, is relatively new to this segment, right? Like we we're talking about paper and Excel, um, and and the early versions. From what I noticed, I mean, it, it has been really been around just getting the safety operations digitized and put into on prem. Like if I look at the company I was with when I was at Intellex, and, and the the history of it was just getting the stuff digitized from paper onto software. Um, the cloud has really been interesting. In the last three to four years, uh, five years actually probably, you're starting to see a lot more mass adoption happening as a result of the cloud because the solutions are much more accessible, they're much more intuitive. Um, and so you're starting to see adoption picked up a, a hell of a lot more. And the implementation of these solutions are getting a lot less complex. Um, so you're seeing, you're seeing this acceleration happening in the industry as a result of that. So Trevor, talk a little bit about sort of um, the direction of iTrack and Microsoft's cloud. And, you know, when I think about it, you know, since Microsoft with this strong uh, cloud offering really allows us to take a, a small company of 25 people and give them the functionality of an enterprise company, which is really, you know, it, it levels the playing field. And I think in health and safety, that's really got to help a small mid-sized company. So Trevor, maybe we talk a little bit about, you know, why you chose the Microsoft cloud and the importance to what iTrack is building. You know, the, the Microsoft cloud is, is, is a fundamental building block of what we do. We are um, not a separate piece of software that kind of sits outside your organization or a separate SaaS offering somewhere. We chose strategically to say, um, that some people have made, you know, large commitments to Microsoft. And as they make those large commitments to Microsoft, they want to layer on industry knowledge. And that's really what our, our software is about, is taking that domain of EHS and the industry knowledge that comes with it, and then layering it on top of the platform. The, the power that comes from that is, is, is simply stunning. Um, our our team and the extension of our team goes into the many thousands of people because we've got AI people from Microsoft. We've got Power Platform releases coming twice a year. And when that happens, essentially our platform can envelop all of that functionality. So we see this as a very um, important shift in the market in terms of how people buy and consume software, that they get the core platform and then they layer pieces on top of it. And vendors like us, um, you know, can be very specialized, can stick to those specialties and make use of all that kind of capability, um, you know, that comes from Microsoft, whether it's Teams or it's, um, you know, the Power Platform Dataverse or it's Power BI or it's the mobile technology, um, a whole, all of those different pieces play a big role of it. So, you know, we should also talk a little bit about, you know, the legacy systems you're displacing today and how sort of their technology handles health and safety compared to the cloud. So Trevor, when you're in a, a con competitive sort of uh, uh, situation, you know, displacing somebody else, what's the difference between what iTrack is doing and what these legacy systems have done? Yeah, we, we've seen that um, when you look at the market overall and some of the competitors, you'll find that um, you know, st industry studies show that about 25% of, under 25% of the market is actually implemented EHS systems. So there's a large part of the market that is actually left you know, to their own devices. And some of them have built their own systems. They've done, you know, kind of in a couple together different pieces. What we try and do is we try and, and, and again, leverage this Microsoft environment that they know and love and really put the extensions into that, um, you know, that give them all the industry expertise of a, a current solution. Where a lot of the, you know, the large traditional, um, you know, legacy vendors, they may kind of try to track you out into their suite of software somewhere else. 
And we really believe that that's a huge barrier in terms of adoption. Our adoption numbers, you know, tell us, um, you know, from our customers that um, where they might see, you know, 10 and 20% adoption across the entire employee base, we're seeing 70 and 80% adoption across our customer base. And that's, that's again, because we're going where the users are and where they, they need to do their work and embedding the industry pieces there rather than trying to attract the user out to some other place. Thanks, Trevor. Vinay, let's talk a little bit about how iTrack, built on the Microsoft Cloud and on Dataverse, is really competing against other cloud solutions. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, I'll talk about it specifically in the EHS space, right? Because I think that's where we're differentiating. And, um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a number of players in the space, right? There's the traditional what we call the big EHS players, who, you know, who I used to work for as well, like the intellects of the Cordes, you know, um, the enable onto the world, right? And so the, these, these firms are, were there even before cloud was there. They're legacy systems. Mm -hmm. They've created cloud versions of their software, but for the most part, they're, they're really serving that high risk, very high risk, you know, uh, industry uh, portfolio. And they've kind of moved beyond that, but that's where their legacy is, right? Um, and you have a number of players that are that are in the small, small space, you know, um, and they're servicing that with very simple solutions, uh, sometimes with forms, you know, uh, automated forms and things like that. And then you, and you have right in the middle, this little sweet spot in the middle where the majority of the market opportunity sits um, that has not been penetrated yet. Um, and, and that's really where you're starting to see this you know, platform approach starting to, uh, to take shape. Um, and so you, you have players that are, that are coming onto the Salesforce platform, um, the App Exchange platform, a company called Compliance Quest, for example, that is really catering their EHS solution towards um, the Salesforce ecosystem, right? And then you have other scenarios like um, um, ServiceNow um, that, that is also opening their platform up and companies like Serenity EHS are building you know, purpose-built solutions for the, for the, um, the ServiceNow platform. Um, where I really think iTrack differentiates is that it's building for the probably the most ubiquitous cloud platform uh, in the world, which is the Microsoft one, right? So if you think about like Microsoft's, you know, market share, um, not necessarily in the IS space, because there's lots of compet competitors in that space, but really in the application side of the business, in the EAS, in enterprise application space, or in the collaboration market, or even on the Windows, you know, uh, market where majority of the in-house custom uh, work is done, right? Um, that That is the market that, you know, iTrack 365 can really natively uh, connect into in a, in a very differentiated way and it also has access to the majority of the market of applications that are out there today. And so that's why I see a, a, a huge differentiation for iTrack uh, 3C5 over some of the other platforms that are smaller ecosystems, still powerful, um, but smaller ecosystems in general. Okay, thanks, Vinay. And I think, you know, when we, we work in the Microsoft platform and when we're talking to people outside the platform, one of the things that I have to explain is we don't look at things like a standalone application. We don't want people to come to our application to use it. That application is part of the desktop, right? Is mm -hmm. part of what you're used to work working with, whether you're in a Teams environment all day or you know, you're working with all the office apps, right. it's there and you click on it, it opens it up and you use it. So Trevor, talk a little bit about the different experience your customers have using iTrack as opposed to somebody using a standalone legacy system or spreadsheets to try to track what's going on in health and safety? Yeah, well, I, I would say that, uh, you know, across the safety ecosystem, people kind of look at this problem a lot differently. And um, some will look at it and say it's an electronic form. That's all you're trying to do is digitize a little piece of information. And uh, you put a little electronic form and then all the magic happens and, and you know, everything's good. We, we really believe that, you know, if you're doing this properly, you're taking care of the process really from end to end. You're capturing data and you're capturing it faster. We, one of our metrics is people can enter data into our system often faster than they can do it on paper, which for me, right off the bat is really important. You're making the worker in the field more productive. And, and when they do that, they're probably not retyping the same information over no. and over again. Well, they're, and they're actually, it's not only even about retyping, it's about the fact that they're, they're actually 
the work, the typing, the, the stuff that they're putting into the form or they're putting into the process is actually doing their job more effectively. A lot of systems, you do your job all day and then at the end of the day, you record what you did in your job. We don't do that. We try and move that the, the tool becomes instrumental as part of making them more effective and they want to use it. So that's, that's really key. Once you've done that, you've captured the data, then you need to share the data. You need to have it centrally located. There's not a company I've been with in you know, 30 years that you, you don't get into some fight about, is that data accurate? Is that data accurate? Everybody's got a different version of a spreadsheet. Everybody's got a different version that they say is the right one. Well, we centralize that in a way with a lot of the controls and compliance that's needed to get you know, the proper reporting around it. Then you add layers like Microsoft Teams where you can collaborate around it. There's a lot of inherently unstructured collaboration that happens. And you know, we, we all see that and know that now from how we've been using Microsoft Teams over the period of COVID in the last year and a half. And then finally, you come to the parts where you're really reporting on the data, thinking about the data, analyzing the data. And that's where we want to take companies so that they're really spending their time thinking about what they're seeing in the data, really processing that into information and analytics so that they can make different choices. And then they go through that whole process again. And that's how companies can adapt. And, and certainly even during times like COVID, we've seen people have to adapt very, very quickly. And you have to get these processes out and you have to adapt them and you have to be very agile with them. And, and that is, is really kind of a core of, of the entire process that we represent. Thanks, Trevor. Um, Vinay, maybe we can talk a little bit more about some of the competitive advantages of iTrack. Yeah, so, so when I first came into this space, I noticed that there was a lot of players in the space. It was a very, very crowded space. Um, and, um, and all of them were um, focusing on the, this notion of kind of, you know, becoming the center of the universe for the customer when it comes to an environmental health and safety management system. What I mean by that is that they were expecting um, their customers to move from their paper-based slash spreadsheet-based processes and completely adopt a new software system uh, of which they would spend all their day and, and time into, right? And um, and what I what I noticed about the the, the, um, the value proposition that iTrack had, which differed from some of the other players, was that um, they weren't asking customers to abandon you know what they what they what they know, right? Um, they were architected on the power platform, uh, as you know, um, which basically allows um, for uh, the customers to be able to leverage a lot of the data, the logic that sits within some of those Excel-based systems, but more than that, to be able to connect into the enterprise applications that, that they have in a much more native uh, way with the common data model and so forth, right? So um, it, really, it really allows um, customers to take safety and really uh, embed it into the design of their core operations of the business. And this, this is a huge, uh, huge uh, differentiator um, you know, from, a, from, a, um, from a market perspective. The other one's really around connecting into um, the collaboration tools that they already use. So Teams, for example, is, is a collaboration uh, platform that, that the companies invested uh, a lot of money into. And, and we found that um, when I was at uh, other uh, companies before and at Intellex, we know one of the biggest challenges we had was getting um, you know, the employee base to actually buy in and input data into the system to make the programs more intelligent. And it required them to come and use the application you know, um, of this uh, third party vendor. Um, so I think the ability to kind of connect into the team's environment, you're able to get safety into the hands of more people, whether they sit in front of a desk or out in the field. And so it's really those three things, leveraging you know, that legacy investments, you know, connecting into the uh, core operations of a company um, and also be able to connect into collaboration uh, platforms of choice. Those three things really stood out to me. So Trevor, you know, when we start to, to look at the competitive advantage and, and Vinay had some very good points there, but I think about what we can do in the Microsoft world with low code, no code compared to some of these other cloud environments. Talk a little bit about, you know, what is your big competitive advantage choosing the Microsoft cloud over some of these uh, other offerings? Well, companies, I go right back to the building blocks of their, their investments in, in their technology stack. Um, there's very few companies in the world that don't have some kind of Microsoft footprint. 
and whether that's um, Active Directory or how they administer their systems or even who, what skills that they've got on their team to administer their systems. Those are tools that they often know and love. And that's what we refer to as, is using the tools that you know and love to be able to extend your processes. So that, that's you know, very core to, you know, to the delivery model. Okay, thank you. So when I was thinking about you know, our interview today, um, what Microsoft's doing around industry accelerators um, on the Power Apps front, I think is gonna be a huge game changer. So correct me if I'm wrong, I can just, if I'm using iTrack and I have one of these industry accelerators, I can just tap right into it, right? No matter, you know, yeah. that's all based on our cloud structure. So whether it's manufacturing, whether it's a uh, healthcare, uh, whether it's uh, distribution, iTrack will work with any one of these accelerators. You're, you're plugging into the same framework, uh, absolutely. And and when you buy into our product, you're not buying another framework, you're using Dataverse. You're using what all those industry accelerators are already using. We're essentially layering another, uh, putting another layer of industry you know, data elements um, and data entities on top of it that say, here's what you need for best practices for this area, and then layer it into the solution from there. And does data flow back and forth? That's the whole point. And that's the promise of the cloud is you could get there, but many companies still struggle with multiple SaaS vendors, legacy applications, disconnected Excel spreadsheets. We're, we're tackling that right at the, at the very beginning and trying to you know, optimize that. And that's where when you see companies successful, their success is very dramatic. Uh, Vinay, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I think um, part of it is, 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 is the technology problem, right? But I think the other part of it, I think Trevor alluded to it, is um, organizations don't have the capacity to work with a lot of companies, right? And when they make a strategic direction to go work with Microsoft, right, um, they, that's a strategic uh, partnership for them. And I think what, what we've been able to do um, when we think about iTrax, you know, uh, go to market, you know, partnering with Microsoft, being part of the ISP Connect, it, we almost come under that banner of that relationship. So it's not an, a net new uh, relationship that the uh, that a customer has to go and manage a vendor relationship that they have to go manage anymore. It's something that connects in not only technically and architecturally, um, but also from a service uh, perspective as well. That they're dealing with a um, almost feels like they're dealing with one entity, uh, and I think that's something to call out as well as a differentiator uh, on top of the technical ones as well. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So Trevor, there's a lot of things happening in this Microsoft cloud. And I really see a lot of applications, you know, being developed that iTrack's really going to be able to partner with and fit with. Talk a little bit about iTrack future and how you see it, uh, you know, taking your product to the next level by leveraging these cloud technologies from Microsoft. Well, I think you can, uh, you know, twice a year we see, you know, excitement within our development team when when a whole uh, suite of new features lands on their desk and and are essentially more building blocks and tools that we can use you know to apply to you know the the employees in the industry in the field uh, frontline field people that we service um, so there's a constant evolution of that happening all the time you know when we go beyond that we start to think, yeah, Teams was a natural one. We were one of the first ISVs to really embrace Teams and embed our software natively inside of Teams. But there's tools like Business Central. There's, you know, other ERP solutions. Um, there's a suite, you know, of the AI technologies and the predictive technologies are very, very exciting. Our architecture is built, again, to leverage all of those. So as you get data, and many companies, just to be clear, a lot of companies, I think, the promise of AI has been a letdown where they see the opportunity, but if you don't have the data and you're not capturing it properly, you can't leverage it in a way. So that's really where we start is helping them with that core capture, validate, making sure that you're getting good data and then starting to have an architecture that allows you to just turn on different ways of interpreting that as they culturally adopt this, they'll start to understand and see new things. Eventually, people want to be in, you know, what they call predictive safety, where you actually can identify across a field workforce of, of 3,000 people, and you can identify and see that there's risk in a certain manufacturing plant or at a certain field operation or, or uh, you know, a, a mining site or what have you. That's where people want to go. 
But I think that there's a disconnect if you're not following that evolution through and getting the core process in place so that you can make use of that. And I think, you know, one of the safest ways to get there is really with this Microsoft stack. Because if I'm trying to use a lot of disjointed technologies to do this, I'm never going to be able to keep up with the upgrade cycles on everybody's applications and the connections I'm going to make. So I think iTrack has a huge competitive advantage building all this on Microsoft. I think, you know, it, it, it's kind of a, um, there's two sides to this story. Um, you know, one is every company has become a technology company. You hear that said a lot of times. And then at the same time, most companies go, well, I don't want to become a coder. I don't want to start developing technology, right? So there's this, of course, we all have technology as part of our daily lives. We need to use that. But I think companies are all also stopping and, and much better buyers of technology where they go, look, our, 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 uh, um, our core competency is about transportation or our core competency is about, um, you know, environmental management or it's about solar energy or what have you. We're going to focus there. Is technology core to that? Absolutely. But do we want to become, you know, coders at the very lowest level where we're building, you know, low level code? No, they don't. They want to be able to, to use the infrastructure of all this technology and then again, apply it. Okay. Vinay, would you like to add anything about sort of the Microsoft stack and where you see iTrack fitting in going forward? Yeah, one of the things I noticed when I came in this, into the space from the mainstream ERP space is that like this is a whole industry that really is an extension of an organization's ERP investments, right? ERP and CRM investments. And, um, and it, was, it was almost like surprising to me that there, you know, there was so many flourishing companies in the space that are really just extending that functionality, right? Um, but as you start to kind of, you know, look at some of the solutions in the market, you start to realize that it required a, they kind of reinvented that process outside of the ERP, right? And, um, and that just makes one more barrier of implementation, but also one more barrier of adoption. Um, and so I, I, I really feel like that um, connection into the ERP core work, uh, work processes uh, such as health and safety and how it connects into a core human capital management suite or a core operational management suite um, or how quality management connects into supply chain management or how environmental tracking connects into asset management, right? So yeah. there's so many like um, amazing synergies with how a business runs today. And if you're able to just like embed, you know, EHS into the core of what they do, you actually make their job a hell of a lot easier, right? And so um, uh, this whole embedded concept, you know, mm -hmm. um, safety by design is something that I think is going to be the future. And that's kind of why Microsoft and all the major cloud providers are opening up their, their clouds as kind of becoming platforms for ISVs to go and generate extensions to their, to their, uh, to their core capabilities. And so it's very exciting. And, and, and large investors are now starting to realize this, uh, this rise of the B2B marketplace and, and how, um, uh, ISVs are really starting to leverage these platforms in, in a much more bigger way, not just for Microsoft's benefits or AWS's benefits. It's, it's really just for the, co the consumer's benefit to bring it all under one roof, right? So Vinay, traditionally we've seen um, companies that are in mining, forestry, oil and gas and construction understand sort of the value of, you know, health and safety. But I think COVID really kind of taught us that health and safety is everybody's business. So let's talk a little bit about that next tier of company and, and how they're approaching this. You got it, Rick. I mean, I think to your point, like, you know, regulation is what was the major driver of the first generation of companies in EHS, right? Like they, you know, they were in dangerous, high risk industries. They had the most you know, fatalities and casualties at work. Uh, and therefore, they had to have these systems in place to, to be able to ensure that they avoided fines. Um, COVID changed the game on this, right? Now, everybody is thinking about uh, safety uh, and the health of their employees as part of, part of their core operations. And so the mind frame um, organizationally, even at the executive layer, has, has really uh, pivoted towards, you know, the mainstream of companies, which is really the largest opportunity area in EHS. Um, and so now it's about everybody thinking about safety in their core operations. And, and so this is where I, I do see a lot of opportunity um, for companies that are able to bring safety into the mix of a company's organizational operational structure uh, in very, very native ways. I think in 
these larger, more higher risk industries, there was a lot more investment in large EHS teams and, and, and VPs that are going to run these programs with the software. But as you go start to go down mainstream into the mid market and into the medium and, and high risk industries, they're not going to have this level of infrastructure to support major software implementations anymore. Um, so the, the idea of embedding safety, the idea of, of integrating and connecting it into what they already own, it starts to really ring a lot more louder uh, to this particular audience. Okay. Trevor, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, uh, no question, uh, you, the year and a half that we've just all gone through has, has really shifted people's thinking. Um, it is, um, you know, no longer just those people on the front lines with large construction equipment or, you know, um, you know, dangerous environments. People are worried about mental health. People are worried about wellness. They're thinking about home office ergonomics. They're thinking about a bunch of processes that now with a workforce that is transient between, you know, their office and maybe working at home more that they need to think about how are they checking in with those people. So it's not always about this, you know, again, major incident that costs, you know, a company a million dollars because of some broken piece of equipment or God forbid someone gets hurt. It's about, you know, regularly checking in with people and making sure that they're well, making sure that they're performing and they've got the supports and structures that they need. So that's where I think the, the you know, the, the, the process we've learned from these industries in the past that have worked in high, high risk industries, but we've take, we're now taking that learning and bringing it, you know, into another part of the market and, and helping organizations rally and put tools in place to make sure of that. Um, whether it's mental health, whether it's, um, you know, employee wellness or, or how someone's, you know, home office is configured. Those things are sometimes really important and, and companies want to pay attention to them. So this is a way that they can start to do that. So Trevor, I hear you've got some very interesting events coming up. Tell us a little bit about what uh, iTrack has planned. Yeah, we, we are. Um, in July, we're, we're announcing a couple of speakers that uh, we're just, we're super excited about. Um, we've been working with uh, uh, an industry focused research group for uh, uh, some time now, and uh, we're bringing in their research director. So this is Verdantix, um, which is well known in the EHS community, and Bill Pennington is going to be their lead researcher, is going to be joining us. And um, in complement with that, we're also going to have Ryan Cunningham. And Ryan Cunningham is from Microsoft, and many of us will know him from the dynamics and the, and the Power Platform ecosystem. He's a huge advocate of what the Power Platform is doing and the kind of capability it's bringing to industry. And he's graciously agreed to participate and give his viewpoints of how industry ISVs and where we connect and, and how that supports Microsoft and vice versa. So um, it's gonna be a fantastic event. Okay, and I'm sure we'll have uh the links to those events posted with this video. So for those who want to join us, they'll be able to find out more information there. Trevor, why don't we just get a few closing remarks about uh, iTrack and uh, environmental health and safety marketplace. Vinay, over to you first. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of uh, energy around EHS and generally, um, you know, ESG. Uh, there's a lot of investors um, now, you know, almost mandating um, investments in companies that are trying to make businesses and, and change their businesses for good, right? Um, and there's a lot of energy around that today. And, and EHS is going to be one of the spaces that are going to be a primary, you know, beneficiary of that energy around, you know, getting more environmentally and getting more health and safety in, uh, into their processes. Um, and so I think it's it, the, you know, the the sky's the limit here on this market opportunity. And I think it's going to see a revival as a result of that. Um, and uh, and I, I do feel that, uh, you know, uh, iTrack 365 uh, is going to see a lot of the benefit from the convergence of the cloud, you know, adoption that's happening in the market as well. And so I, I, I do, I do uh, have a lot of, uh, I'm very bullish about the opportunity in this market going forward. Okay, thank you. Trevor, over to you. I think that traditionally, uh... A lot of people looked at the safety incident as, um, or, you know, the safety management space as safety incidents. Hey, we need to record and investigate an incident. And that's kind of where it started and where it stopped. Um, I think that even during the time of COVID, I think, um, 
you know, there's been a heightened sensitivity to how we work with, um, you know, frontline workers, field level workers, and and make them a part of our digital workflows. So to me, I, I'm I'm also um, incredibly uh, bullish on the space because this is not just about um, that primary and very important concern of safety. This is about making businesses more efficient, giving them better data, keeping better care of their people, and helping them uh, to react and, and be very agile um, as conditions change. And nowhere you know, more than in the last year have we seen um, how important that is. So I really think that this concept of embedded safety, the concept of you know, we're not, we're, we're going to the tools that they have and giving them more capabilities and embedding that in the everyday workflows is a game changer. I think this is going to change how many frontline people interact with head office, how they collect data, how they do reports, how they engage when there's problems, how they share when they've got solutions. And that to me is, 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 is a very big and exciting space. Um, also, I would also agree with Vinay in terms of the ESG space. You know, when you get into environment, social and governance, when you get into this area that is really redefining how companies are looked at when they get investment and when they bring people in, are you properly managing yourself to the environment? Are you taking social, um, you know, are, are you um, producing your, your, your materials in, in mine sites and, and manufacturing facilities with a certain level of compliance? Consumers want to know that. And as soon as they, they start to push that into industry, that's really where the birth of ESG has started to come from. That is, is exciting. And, and now ESG is a new area. There's not a lot of definition. But what's interesting to me is the fact that they're turning to the EHS market as one of the areas that has figured out some of these problems. Every company we work with knows how to record our financial metrics. We know how to record our accounting. Health and safety knew how to do these soft metrics sometimes. And ESG is similar to that. So I think that is just a, an enormous opportunity where this whole EHS space, ESG space is going to converge. I think the opportunity and the size of the market is going to balloon. And we're already starting to see that happen. So, um, yeah, we're up, we're up for that challenge. And, and with a key partner like Microsoft, very excited to tackle it. Okay. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Vinay, for taking time today to talk a little bit about iTrack in the environmental health and safety software market. And we'll be catching up with you in the near future to hear, you know, what's new in both spaces. Thanks. Thanks a lot.